It's here everyone, it's here! So in here we have the batteries. Not one, not two, but 30 high power lithium polymer cells. So this is our, these are some of them. So if we unwrap them, this is what they look like. Um, these are CO20B um, cells. These were designed for racing cars and the company who was selling them uh, went out of business and uh, yeah, they were selling them off pretty cheaply. So these cells behind me have crazy performance. They are 20 amp hours each and I'm going to be building a 14S2P pack. So these batteries, this pack I'm building, will have 40 amp hours of capacity. That's insane! That's like 50 miles of range, potentially. They can do 200 amps continuous, no problem. 400 amps peak for 10 seconds. These will be no bottleneck whatsoever for this bike. They're more than capable and that's the reason I chose them. So let's have a little bit of story time. So I was on the Edna Sphere forum, which I'm sure many of you have heard of if you're into e-bikes. Great place for anything to do with electric vehicles. And I was originally going to get Samsung 40T or 30Q, I think it is. Sells. I was trying to decide between which one to get and someone said hey there's this guy who's selling these cells um, so I looked into them and they were a incredibly good value but also incredibly high performance as I said 20 amp hours 200 amps discharge no problem um, so I got in contact with him and he lived pretty close to me about half an hour away um, so I wasn't gonna have to pay loads of money for shipping which was awesome um, and he also custom makes these bus bars which are made out of aluminium and then he tins them um, I think with nickel or something so they don't corrode which is awesome um, so essentially these just connect to the batteries like so, so I'm going to have two in parallel and then connect them in series um, and it all just bolts together which is amazing um, so don't need to spot weld or solder or anything so if anything happens to one cell you can just unbolt them and there you go I've also ordered a BMS and I've ordered the same one that Andy Kirby and Tony over at Vortex have got. It's a smart BMS that runs or can connect via Bluetooth. It is just an amazing unit from what I've seen. So much configurability and really takes good care of your cells. I mean, you can set it so that if it's too cold, it won't let you start the bike and let you use full power. You can set the maximum voltage for the cells, maximum discharge, maximum charge. The list goes on and on and on. It's incredible what it can do and the fact that you can all change it on the go from a phone. Before I actually bought the cells, I used some good old fashioned cardboard just to model how many bus bars I need. So here's a quick montage of that. So I've also made these boxes uh, which replicate slightly larger um, the size of the battery cells. Uh, so these fit in like so. There's a bit of a special order. You have to get them in and rotate them, but um, as you shall see, fit in just fine. So the plan is if these will fit in fine, then the cells will also fit in fine. Always good just to check with the cardboard model that everything's going to work. So you've got um, holes here, here, um, then you've got sort of clips on the bottom and obviously they all bolt together on the top. You've got a nice protective bit on the back. Obviously these are the physical cells in the middle. These are um, lithium polymer, lithium ion polymer is the full name, but lipo is the short name. And then these are the bulk of the cells and they are pretty heavy. Um, so these in total weigh about 12 kilos, which is a lot. This thing weighs about 38 kilos at the moment with the frame and the wheel and sabaton and seat and everything. Now if I just get my multimeter, we can do a check of all the batteries. Well that is a very good sign. These are all within a millivolt of each other, which is pretty incredible. We're testing it. Let's just load them up. And 
there you go. That is what 28 high power lithium cells look like. And let's just see what the bike feels like. Oh my god. <laughs> that is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the reason that this isn't fitting into the case, as I said, is because these little um, bits that stick out here. So I'm going to have to grind these down. Um, hopefully someone's going to lend me an angle grinder. You know who you are. So next I tried to get rid of the studs with the file, but this took far too long. And it didn't even end up fitting the batteries, so it's time to break out the angle grinder. So after a bit more of this, and this, I started to make the aluminium plate that would go at the bottom to support the batteries. First I cut out the sheet of aluminium that I was going to use and then gave it a quick file down to remove all the sharp edges. I then measured where the existing battery mounting holes were and then drilled them out. And luckily with the addition of some washers and spacers it all fit on just fine. So the piece is now in. I made two small holes down here, which now have two screws in them. That's just to stop the plate bouncing up. And then the two main holes up here, which go through to the other side, and it's all adjustable. It just lines up with the holes that were intended for the battery box, and then the other two screws there. So that's what the batteries will rest on. And then the bolts for the sabaton will just poke down underneath, and then this plate can then rest on them. And uh, just for context, because on YouTube, time kind of gets bit weird this is taking about an entire day to make started about 10 o'clock and it's now about five o'clock so yeah this bike is taking a long time but it's pretty satisfying so I now have this aluminium flat bar and what this is for is to hold the bottom of the pack together so a rod's gonna go across the top and then I'm gonna bend this round so it pinches the bottom together And there we go, two straps, one on each side, held together by the bolts. To mount the batteries securely, I created a bracket using these bits, uh, which just mounts it to the frame and then uses some rods to secure the batteries together. So this is obviously the base plate, which is the foundation which you see me make. However, I've added this bar, 5mm aluminium bar, to the back is held in by two uh, countersunk M4 screws which are all tapped and everything. Uh, you'll see where this comes into later but it's basically to provide a mounting point for some upright supports to hold in the batteries at the end. Then comes this which I've talked about, however I've switched up the M6 rods for M4 rods because um, it was just too much of a tight fit going through the batteries. So these aren't quite as strong, but all they're doing is just supporting the batteries and keeping them aligned, so I think it will be alright. So I'm putting the protective metal side backwards, uh, just to give them a little bit more protection. There we go, clicks into place. Next I started to make the second pair of brackets which would support the uh, other set of batteries. So I drilled the holes and uh, cut them down to size and then installed them just like the other ones. And there we go, securely mounted. Additionally, I decided to add some supports in the form of some upright M6 threaded rods. So I drilled the holes and then tapped them and then added a nut onto the end, which could then clamp down to hold it securely in place and add some extra support. It was then just a matter of repeating the installation process and then I could have a look at it and it actually came out pretty well. So this bottom half of the pack, that's in there really solidly. I mean, it's shaking the whole bike if I move it. This part obviously isn't properly secured in, I'm only prototyping. However, with the addition of some neoprene and some spacers, it's actually holding its own weight pretty well and not leaning against these bolts at the top. So I'll leave this for the next video. But at least we got half the battery sort of installed. I haven't wrapped it in the foam, uh, which I'm going to do, and I haven't sorted out the wiring. But let's leave that for another video. So everyone, thanks for watching. I know it's been a while, but I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I'm excited to see what these cells can do, because I know they're pretty damn good. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Get 
makes it much harder to get them in and out because it's much stiffer. That didn't come out right, did it? 